All right, let's talk about group frequency tables and using those to make histograms. Now here's an example of a question. I know it's got a lot of information out there, but basically we're given this data, those numbers right there, and told that that represents the number of hours that people spent studying in and out of class last week. Then we're asked to make a group frequency table doing a frequency distribution and a relative frequency distribution, <clears throat> and then use that to make a histogram. One important thing to note is the last sentence. We're told to use five classes with uniform width of 10 years, where the lower limit of the first class is 10. Right? I'm going to take that information with me to the next slide. So five classes, uniform width of 10, starting at the number 10. So here's what my frequency distribution looks like. First, I've made my classes. They started with 10, and they each included 10 numbers. So that's the number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's a width of 10 years. Note that this class does start at 19, and the next one goes to 20. So I got this again by counting 10, and then I counted up. 10 more spaces, which gets me to 19, because I have to include the hours that are 10. I'll do the next one as well. The next class starts at 20. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. If you actually list out those numbers or use your fingers to count, you'll see that that is 10 numbers. So those are my classes. These are my five classes. I have that written up here. Then we calculate the frequency, called F. So how many data were between 10 and 19? So if we go back and look at the last slide, there was only one person that studied between 10 and 19 hours. If I count up how many people studied between 50 and 59 hours, that was six. Last, we have the relative frequency. It's always going to be written as a percent. It's F, what we just got in the previous column, the frequency, divided by N, the number of data points. And in our problem, that was 20. So 1 divided by 20 gives me 0 0.05. And the relative frequency, as I said, wants to be written as a percent. So 0 0.05 is 5%. 5 over 20 is 0.25, or 25%. In this case, I did not have to round. If I had been given decimals, I would also have in directions how many decimal places to round to. So that's my relative frequency. Now I'm going to take this data and make what's called a histogram, which is a type of graph. So here's our histogram. Some people mistakenly call this a bar graph. A couple things. A histogram is always going to use classes, numerical data. A bar graph does not have to use numerical data. You can group people by their favorite ice cream flavor, which isn't numerical. The bars are always going to touch. In a bar graph, they do not touch. And they're going to be uniform width, so we want them to be roughly the same size across. I made sure to label everything. I have hours. That's what these numbers represent. Frequency. That's how many that was our middle column, the frequency, the hours, were. that's what our classes were, and then a title as well. So I made my frequency distribution, the table, and then I used that table to make this graphical representation called a histogram.